is I feel very nervous when things are too calm or when things feel good. And I'm not even totally aware of that until retrospectively looking back. And this is a huge one for anyone who struggles with anxiety. And this has been really powerful for me to understand. If you struggle with anxiety, if you, if you have dealt with anxiety, anxiety attacks, those kind of anxious thoughts, your body, your nervous system is literally wired to that feeling. So it's almost like an addiction. It's almost like a drug. Like the stress hormones enter your body and it makes your body feel a certain way and you get energy right. It's like fight or flight. There's all of these things that go along with it. I'm always going to take anything that Rachel starts to talk about in regards to flight or fl fight or anxiety or stress hormones. I'm just going to take it always as a little bit of a pinch of salt because she, as we know, has a tendency to, even though she says she reads and she does all this documentary film rights, film watching and she is you know watching a million youtube videos whatever she's done to supposedly give herself a degree from the college of rachel hollis uh, i cannot trust uh, always her sources because she's not even saying what she's um using as the cited source for the scientific information so take whatever she's saying with cautionary pinches of salt at this time I can't verify probably any of her science. But the biggest thing to understand is that your nervous system is wired for that anxiousness. And what I used to do back in the day is if I started to feel anxious and I didn't really know why, I would go, okay, wait, what is going on? When did I start to feel anxious? And some things are actual anxiety disorders that are ones that would need to be balanced with medications because maybe the chemical imbalance of your brain is not functioning optimally and therefore maybe you are getting an actual true anxiety disorder that would need to be medically managed as well as maybe managed with counseling and so forth and a, a, a number of techniques so again you know just always caution with what rachel gives in the way of any medical advice always always start to feel anxious and i've talked about this in books like this was huge for me and this was so helpful for me seven or eight years ago was saying when did i get triggered when did i start feeling anxious and then i could figure out what had thrown me off it was so helpful but recently I realized, wait a minute, that can be super dangerous if nothing actually triggered you. Because you can search and search until you find something that's wrong with your life. It's very easy to do. Like, it's so easy. If I sat here for 90 seconds, I could come up with things that are wrong with my life. And that question, okay, when did you get triggered, taught me, I think, on some level to believe that there was always something to feel anxious about. And so I got into a really bad habit of feeling a certain way and then finding the thought that would match the feeling. What you think is what you feel, right? If you have a thought in your head, it gives you an emotional response to it. But what's dangerous is that when our bodies get wired to a certain emotion, when they get wired to anxiousness, when they get wired to feeling low, to feeling sad, when they get wired to anger, it becomes like literally your neurological pathways, your nerves, all of those things wire <laughs> to make you feel like that. And so suddenly you're having a feeling because your body's used to it. And then you're going, oh, quick, come up with a thought that matches this. And then that creates a whole wild spiral. It makes it so much worse than it was. So what I've learned to do, and it is so effing powerful, is when I start to feel anxious, which like I said, when things start to feel good, when everything's calm, I'm like, oh, it makes me nervous. Because on some level, I feel like the other shoe's about to drop. And I know that I am not the only person who's experiencing this right now. I don't, I've always had some anxiety issues, but I don't ever remember this feeling. I really think this feeling is like post COVID. I think this is like some PTSD of, for all of us, of the lack. 
I just don't like when people again I mean it's fine she's having a conversation but she's using some really heavy terms that are actually used to diagnose mental health conditions anxiety has she been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder I don't know is it just her using the word anxiety instead of her talking about times when she has stress because having times of situational stresses and actually an anxiety disorder are two totally completely different things I'm sure that's what she means you know I don't think she has problems uh, leaving the house or you know having things that are often often accompanied with true anxiety disorders so I think she's talking about having some life stresses and I think she's talking about you know maybe some imposter syndrome in there too when she's talking um, about this feeling of you know where the, when the shoe is going to drop I think that's more about an imposter syndrome um, so I just always want to caution when she's talking about these mental health things that she's just coming from a place of her own experience and she's using terms not necessarily always correctly she's read an article and she just likes the sound of it is what I get and we're only halfway through this thing and I've sped it up a little bit it was a long podcast <laughs> it must be there for the drive to work and from work and I have a long drive but this is the first time I've ever heard this uh, podcast so I have no idea what she's saying Asked several years and not knowing what was going to happen next or who might get sick or just living in that fight or flight stage for so long I think has created this feeling that if it if life just feels calm I'm not even saying like the high, highest heights if life just feels calm it starts to make me feel nervous and then I'll go oh gosh okay well um, what's wrong and then my brain's like well I got you what you know where do you want to start you want it chronologically or alphabetically like my brain can always supply it so now when I start to feel those anxious emotions, those anxious feelings in my body, I'm just like, no, 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 bitch. We are not gonna do that. We are not, like, I separate myself. This has been really powerful too. Separate myself from my thoughts. This is why meditation is so powerful. Because you are not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are a human being experiencing your brain and whatever your brain is focused on in the moment if you've heard any of my previous YouTube videos I have talked about experts cautioning people about doing things such as meditation if they've had really truly traumas in their past because just meditating randomly could actually bring these past traumas out it can be quite um, unnerving it could be quite disturbing for the person um, it's just not advised unless it's being guided by a professional so just if you feel that you are somebody who has had something of that nature happen in your past don't just follow Rachel's advice to just start randomly meditating. Um, just so just, you know, proceed with caution with that. Back to the podcast. Meditation is powerful because you separate yourself from your thoughts. You don't judge them. You literally practice like letting your thoughts pass through your mind and not having an emotional response to the thoughts you think. You do not have to believe every stupid thought you think. Dr. Amen, one of my favorite quotes ever. Like, you don't have to believe the things you think. Just because you believe it does not mean it's true. Dr. Amen, the shyster who has the overpriced clinics, who the more I read about how bad those supplements are and how expensive they are and just how other peers in the profession just don't really give him much, they don't really sort of hold him up much esteem, I think is what I'm trying to say. Um, 
it's funny just she loves talking about him i think she must be getting her like podcast add-in so she can keep getting either the monthly supplements or the brain scans or something she always mentioning that she has to be getting a kickback allegedly allegedly maybe possibly it seems like it could be <laughs> i'm just right think of all the dumb stuff you used to believe when you were a little kid that you know is not true anymore I was like really sure I was gonna marry Dean Kane. Anyone else remember the new adventures of Lois and Clark? Dean Kane. That was my aspiration, guys. Later it was Matt Damon. I mean clearly I had some I had some big dreams for my life. But I used to believe all kinds of stuff that I don't believe anymore. So what on earth makes you think that when a thought enters your brain that's like, you're not smart enough for this, you're not strong enough for this, you're not What? Why are you like, oh okay, you're probably right, thought. Why do we do that? It's because we believe that we are the thought and we're not. And this is a practice. This isn't like a light switch that you can just flip on and immediately get it forever and not have to deal with it anymore. It's something that you work on. And meditation will really, really, really help you with this. But the best advice I would give you, if you feel like you do this too, like things are feel good and then you kind of will self-sabotage or you'll start to feel anxious even though nothing's going wrong, is to just be aware of it and to call BS on yourself and to just accept that life is meant to be more constant. I, I heard this when I first, one of my first jobs, I had a guy in like a cubicle, a couple cubicles, I who said this, I've never forgotten it. There was another, uh, a girl who's also in a nearby cubicle who was always fighting with her boyfriend. There was just drama, they be the highest highs, the lowest lows, and she tells us all about it. And I remember one day she wasn't there, I was young, I was like 19 or something, and he said, he was older, of course you were 19, Rachel, because that was the only time you really had a job outside of working for yourself. <laughs> so, I mean, this is her only this is her only experience outside of her own company. So, and I apologize. I guess there was a helicopter. I guess they're looking for somebody <laughs> at, the, at the ocean front. He said, "You know, a relationship is not supposed to look like this." Now, if you're not watching on YouTube, I'm going to imagine like a heart monitor, but like where it's super erratic. Like, you know, a relationship's not supposed to be up and down. Is she talking about a ventricular rhythm or an atrial rhythm? Because both can be quite erratic. <laughs> she shouldn't talk about either, probably, because she's not an expert. Oh, here comes these helicopters again. They're looking for somebody. They're just some police helicopters. See, this is what I try to do. I'm trying to get outside. I finally got the sunnies off and now I've just got jet like the noise of the helicopters going and my neighbor doing their repairs next door or whatever they're doing. Alright, back to Rachel and her long ass podcast. Now it's not supposed to be highs, highs, lowest lows. Life is not supposed to be an erratic heart monitor. Life is supposed to look like, you know, nice and steady. Ooh, we got a little height here. Oh, we had a hard season, it gets a little low. But it's not supposed to be chaos. And there are so many people who are living in chaos and when it starts to get a little bit better. I'm trying to think of a self-help guru bingo and I need to remember to add the words abundance and seasons to it because I think I left those two off the bingo cord that I want to add into my next podcast that I do. A, a reaction to a podcast. Sure. They sabotage themselves or they have an anxiety attack because they believe that that was meant to be anyway. So for me, I don't like that I do this, but by holding awareness that I do this, it's really powerful in helping me to separate myself from the thought and go back to that feeling of contentment. I am so grateful. I had the most amazing experience this last weekend. And I, I literally was crying. I, I got to go watch one of my friends. Um, he's prepping for a you're going to notice the shirt has changed because I had to stop filming yesterday due to some of the issues with, let's get back to Rachel Hollis and her podcast. So yeah, happy 4th of July, everybody. Um, as you can see in a new shirt, but I'm still enjoying the patio of peace and continuing to listen to Rachel Hollis and her podcast. So let's hear, there's not much longer left. Maybe. That is glorious. Glorious, I said for 11 hours. That, 
That doesn't happen. I'm a mom of four. That does not happen. The things that make my life beautiful are things of contentment. Life is not supposed to be highs, highs, lowest, lows every other day. You get beautiful moments of light and love and fun, right? But if you fall in love with peace, oh my gosh, I mean, this is the gift. And the thing I'm working on in my life right now is when it's peaceful, not believing that it's supposed to be worse. The fourth thing that I don't like about myself, but that I am working on, I, I'm really working on this. I, before she gets into her fourth thing, I think I needed to give a third thing, because I gave a first and a second, and one was about the time, and the other was about how I don't keep my house very uh, tidy like I would like to keep it. Uh, the third thing I would say I don't like about myself is I can be quite unforgiving with situations, uh, especially with dealing with mistakes made by corporations in my accounts and so forth I get really quite upset uh, having to deal with the mistakes that I these companies will make like with an account I've had quite a few recently and I feel that I already pay a lot of money and I'm already doing a lot of their customer service work by doing everything you know by direct debit and so on and so forth and they don't always attribute things to your account correctly and it's usually something that they may not have gotten right on their end and you're spending a bunch of time trying to get things corrected. Those are fireworks. But I tend to get quite irritable through the process. So I, I just I don't like handle the stress of having to spend time dealing with those things it just irritates the and I'm just rude and I think that's something I don't really like about myself I think I need to be more patient and a little bit kinder I do always tell the people though I'm not mad at them I'm mad at the company but still I say I don't really like about my personality dealing with people that way I think it makes me a, <laughs> a true Karen it's bloody awful all right let's hear her get to number four she's on number four now okay Podcast number four from Rachel. I have a lot of anger still about my ex. Oh. I have a lot of anger. And I am working on it. I'm working on releasing the anger because the anger is not going to help me. It will not make it better. It will not fix the past. It will not fix the present. It will do nothing. It's that old saying that, you know, feeling angry or bitter about someone else is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And I, in wanting to get past this anger and wanting to release this anger, I have done so much work and so much healing and so much learning. And I do actually wanna honor my anger because the anger really helped me, forced me to figure out and face things that I didn't face for a very long time and to learn truths. And frankly, I don't, I don't want to know any more truths. I'm good. I don't want to find out anything else. <laughs> I really don't. I just would love, oh, I would love to just be done with that chapter. But there's still, if I'm honest, there's still, like I'm feeling really good right now and I'm, you know, managing the things and doing what needs to be done. But what I, I, I feel like this is another area where I feel like the other shoe might drop again at any moment and that makes me feel sort of anxious and then that makes me feel angry. But I want to honor my anger because my anger did help me to face a lot of things and to learn a lot of things and to really figure stuff out in a way that I hadn't ever. But I want to get to a place where I can think about this person and have no emotional response. I heard recently that I'm always very confused. I mean, I don't expect there not to be an emotional response. I can promise you, I had not heard from my ex-husband. And then a couple of years ago, he got in touch with me over a matter 
uh, regarding our uh, previous matrimony uh, in the Catholic Church and it's a long story and a <laughs> pretty bad story <laughs> depending on how you look at it but anyway I can understand you know not wanting to have you know that kind of feeling of resentment or anger and I still have it and it's been a long time because I didn't I got through it but then this thing had brought everything back out of me again and so I can understand where she's coming from on that and I so I kind of maybe number four I would have an agreement with Rachel here that uh, maybe my marriage is also that way I find that interesting I always wonder what was Dave doing that was so unforgivable almost or so um, stress inducing to uh, Rachel Hollis I would be curious because they kind of do and don't he seemed to be uh, thrown off guard and not anticipating that she was going to move to asking for a divorce I mean, why would you think sh your spouse would when your whole entire business is based on selling conferences to a marriage event, uh, teaching other couples how to be a really awesome couple and being, a, you, you know, good at marriage or whatever. And they sell that and they charge people a lot of money for that. So, um... I don't know if she has anger that he wanted to be CEO um, or that maybe the drinking. Um, I mean, I can understand if it was heavy duty, I can understand why that would be irritating. Um, I don't know. Let's see if she says any more. Let's not hear me. Let's hear Rachel. That, oh, I'm sorry, because I can't remember where I read this from, what book I was reading, but they said to remember a past experience without emotion is wisdom. Wisdom is when you can remember a past experience that was negative without any emotion attached. And I was like, oh, I want that. I want that for me. I want that for my kids. I want that for my future. But it's still there. And I honestly did not know a world. I could not have imagined a world where I'd still be in this place after so much time. But again, the more that I learn, the more that I understand that this is part of the process. And as long as I'm moving in the right direction, I feel like I'm making strides. So that is something I don't like, but that I am working on. The fifth thing, and I, I struggle to even say I don't like this, but I'm being honest and I don't like this, is that my hormones still get whacked out. I did a whole episode about this with my hormone doctor. Please go listen to it. If you are a leader, if you are someone that has, you got hormones, in your body that affect I don't understand why she insists on using this word but leader I mean is that be, is that like I don't know I actually think it's kind of insensitive to women women in some ways um I know it's probably more inclusive supposedly to the idea of those who are natural with um, female menses <laughs> would be the scientific word. I, she just loves that word. I don't know. I find it very odd. And she's off with the hormone doctor again. You have heard my statements in regards to Dr. Amen and the clinics that he runs, which there are currently six here across the United States, including one in the Commonwealth of Virginia close it up to the uh, DC area but he is someone that many in the professional world of psychiatry do not think a lot of the techniques he uses are valid like the scans he uses aren't really authentically giving the type of results that are warranted for the amount of money it costs to have the brain scan and then he has these very expensive supplements that he sells uh, that patients are supposed to take every month. So, 
with that said, if she's supposedly getting all these brain scans and supposedly all these supplements, then why her, and he's a great hormone doctor, why are her hormones still out of whack? I think that's just wild. I'm in, I don't want to get into it, but let's put it this way. I don't feel like my hormones are that out of whack. I'm 53 years old. I just think, I don't understand where she just gets so involved in it that way. I'm just confused at all times. Anyway, let's get back. But, you know, I always want to preface the game. You know, take anything she says with about the hormones. Read about the hormone doctor and his clinics before any judgment is made or passed. Affect the way you feel and affect your moods. Please go listen to the episode I did with Dr. Brush. It's so important. It's so powerful. And she has helped me so much. Like, so many things absolutely have changed in my life because I went on this journey to learn to balance my hormones. I know my body so well now. And I can feel the hormones fluctuate and change. I literally can feel it. Like, from one hour to the next, I'm like, oh, dang. This is... And that's great because it means that I can affect what's happening to the best of my ability. But oftentimes, the harsh hormones that we feel closer to our period are the result of the past couple of weeks, not necessarily this one. So the way that you ate, the supplements you did or did not take, the stress that you're feeling all affect you when you're PMSing or when you're on your period. And so that can feel really frustrating to me because I'm working so hard and I really don't like feeling like I'm moving backwards. This is, I guess not something I don't like about myself, but definitely not my greatest quality is I'm really hard on myself if I feel like I'm backsliding. I don't mind making mistakes. I don't mind moving in a direction very, very slowly, but I hate when I feel like I am, I've regressed or I've gone back to like a previous version of my, oh, it just drives me bonkers. So the hormone thing feels frustrating because my hormones will be super balanced and great and I'll just be normal. And then last month was a good example of them sort of really getting off kilter and really feeling out of balance and then suffering the effects of that. And I feel very frustrated by that. So. I'm working on it, but it is something that I currently don't like, and I do, I just cannot encourage you enough to go on your own journey. If you feel like you are experiencing mood swings that are really intense, if you feel like you're having bad cramps, if you feel very low at certain times of the month, very overwhelmed, very anxious, like, these are not normal ways to feel. Please hear me right now. There are things that you can do to help balance the way you feel they're actually really simple changes that just happen with knowledge so if you've not listened to that episode please go listen in please go do your own research please go read period power by Maisie hill just please arm yourself with knowledge because this is still frustrating for me and i've been working on it for a year and i just know how life-changing it can be for you if you make change all right the last one number six so there are only six things that i disliked about myself after sitting with a Okay, so again, any of Rachel Hollis's conversations around hormones and periods and this particular clinic, I think you really do need to do your research. I don't know what type of benefit she gets from obviously having the physician or one of the physicians at one of the clinics, being one of her guests, obviously having a uh, video that she released with her actually going to the clinic and meeting Dr. Amy and getting the brain scanned if she's getting these things you know comped I mean I have no idea so but I just always say be hesitant I just don't think you know you know what my if you go back and look at the Dr. Google medicine woman that I have about Rachel Hollis then you'll learn a little bit more about the clinic and the types of mm, costs that are involved with participating in their program which is often not covered by American medical insurance. Now if you're hearing all this weird buzzing noise in the background and so forth that's because all of the air conditioning units are on because it is probably 80, 90 degrees, 80 some 90 degrees outside. I do have sunscreen on so I do want to say I do have an umbrella up um, and it's kind of I guess protecting the camera but anyway we're about to get done if I had to say number five about something I would not think was great about myself I didn't like is sometimes I'm not always the smartest about how I 
spend my money. I think that I try to make good choices with my money. I think sometimes I do things that have not benefited me and so that means that I don't have as much money in retirement at this time as I would like. There's been other things I think that I've done really well with my money like purchasing this condo uh, many years ago when it was at a very good price and so that was one thing I've always thought was really good. There are certain things having credit card debt that I carry now I'm not smart and so that sort of area and and you know just having and carrying debt or is something i don't really like uh, i used to never have debt through my entire 20s i hated it and didn't want to carry it because i thought it was so dangerous and ever since i became a homeowner and having like more of a regular career and just acquiring all of these adult items i have started to acquire more debt along the way. I also went back to school, took a second degree, so I also now have student loan debt. I mean, the list, you know, just continues, I mean, especially in this day and age where you, you know, you have your phone, your internet, your car, car insurance, the gas, obviously. I have to pay for tolls for my job. It just, you know, obviously it adds up. I have pets, they need to see the vet. <laughs> just I don't want to hop on about it but obviously you know so I wish sometimes I could be a little bit better with money all right but she was talking about her hormones it seemed very odd odd okay nothing about like posting inappropriate you know post on social media or having things said that were from other historical writers and claiming them to be something that I'm saying. No, not in, in not, and then blaming my staff and throwing them under a bus. No, none of that has been mentioned. Um, and then it was really like, still like, I felt like she was showing, um, and, or I should say throwing uh, some shade at uh, Dave in some way when she was talking about the anger in the marriage because I feel like she's still upset at his actions for something because usually when you're that angry because at least in my experience and I have been an angry ex-wife it's usually because you feel the other person has done something to harm you or ups, you know not think about you or consider you in, in one way or another and so I feel that she's angry with him because he violated something within the sanctity of their marriage. And I'm not saying he had an affair or something, I'm just, he, something in his behavior. Maybe he just wasn't doing enough work. Jesus Christ, whatever the work is. I want to know exactly what the work is. The man got a podcast and a blog and all sorts of stuff. Okay, let's get to back to her horrors. I'm like, you can barely see the page because the sun is here. Let me see if I, let me try to open this thing up. And I get a witness for anyone else who was raised to be a good girl or a good boy and you were taught that if someone was older, they knew better. If someone was a boss, they knew better. If someone was a politician, they knew better. Pastor, they knew better. I have been taught this lesson by the universe over and over and over again and I will keep learning it. And as a side note, when we are forced to learn a lesson again and again, it gets worse. Like, it gets so much worse. The lessons get so much harder if we don't understand them when they happen and they keep trying to teach us things. And I have learned this so powerfully over the last few years, and I am still dealing with the ramifications of having trusted authority. And I swear to you, to me, to whatever gods are listening, I have learned Mother Earth, the island of Hawaii, whoever is listening, I have learned, I have learned <laughs> that just because someone is older, just because someone is male, just because someone has a big job, has a big title, just because someone is in a position of authority does not mean they are an authority. I have given away my power so many times because number one, I trust authority, and number two, I just trust people. I assume 
that everybody is like me. And I would never tell you that I could do something if I could. I would never sort of put on airs and pretend to know I am the queen of like being in a meeting with 30 people and I'll be like, wait, sorry, can someone just explain? I'm, I just, can, can you help me understand this little point? Like, can I just, I do not care. I will embarrass myself by asking real stupid questions to make sure that I understand what is being said. And I have learned to do that because Frankly, I've been screwed over by this so many times. And it's interesting because I don't listen to authority when it comes to my dreams. Uh, you maybe have heard me tell the story of my first book, every publisher turned it down. Every publisher in the freaking United States that we did send it to was like, nope, 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 nope. You have struggled with this as well. Look back and ask yourself, this is why we face even the things we don't want to think about, but ask yourself, when did you know that there was a red flag? When did you feel an issue in your stomach? When did you know in your heart that something was off with this person but you ignored it? It's my favorite question to ask my friends when they're like, they've gone through a breakup or like a business relationship went sour or whatever. I'll be like, yeah, but when did you know? And they're like, damn girl, I knew after a week. I knew after a month. I knew, you know, all of these times, but we ignore that intuition and we ignore that feeling in our spirit that's telling us something's not right. And you're doing it because you're like, yeah, but they're the CEO. Yeah, but they're, you know, of questions of what these things are. Sorry, I'm going to stop that for just a second. Uh, firstly, I'm going to apologize for the for the Top Gun Maverick soundtrack that's playing overhead. I guess the uh, pilots are working today on uh, July the 4th, so I do apologize for that. We don't have long left. And then the second point I wanted to make is I've almost like checked out a wee bit with her because I'm not quite sure what this sixth and final thing she does not like about herself is. I haven't worked out is it that she listens to authority or that she doesn't listen to authority or she doesn't listen to the right authority or she's I, I just I haven't quite worked out what she's what point she's trying to make. I just I feel this was a very lackluster list that she produced here. My name is doing like work next door too. So I'm gonna to try to get this done quick. She's almost done. And then I get to think of number six and wish everybody a very happy holiday and to like, comment, subscribe, so forth. I love the comments. I love hearing um, how people are responding to the channel. So thank you all of you who've said something. Happy fourth. Mean and what it will mean for your career, your finance, your life if you agree to it. Some of the worst business decisions I have made or that have been made on my behalf by people that I trusted were getting so focused on like the sparkly dangly thing that I didn't read the fine print, that I didn't look at what it would really mean, that I didn't go back and align myself with what my intention is and what I'm trying to do and see, okay, wait, but does this actually get me closer to the goal? Does this get me where I want to go? Or is this just something fancy that people will see on social media and think I'm cool? It's one of the biggest mistakes I have made and someday, not now. Someday I'll write like a biography or a, a memoir. That's what it's called. I'll write a memoir. I'll be like 60 and I'll write a memoir and then stuff's going to come out. Or maybe by that point I'll be so evolved I won't even care anymore now. There is, I believe, uh, some type of difference between a, a memoir and a biography. A biography is written by somebody else. An autobiography would be written by the person whose life it was. A memoir, I think, may talk about possibly just certain periods of time, um, but maybe not go into as much depth as, say, an autobiography. I think that's the difference, says the old lit major. But I actually I aspire to that hopefully by the time I'm 60 it won't even occur to me to do a memoir because I'll just be like whatever those people karma karma will get you so those are the six things that I don't like about myself but that I am working on and I still don't really understand what number six was I still don't get number, what number six was. To, 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 comment down below if you understood. Maybe when I go back to listen to it, because this is my first time I've ever heard this podcast, maybe you'll understand 
what she said, but I have no stinking idea what the sixth and final comment was. So, what's the sixth thing about myself that I don't like? I don't like about something I don't like about myself at this time is that I just don't read enough books like I used to. My, I used to read so many books. I used to read and stay up all night long reading books and when I would travel the underground in London to and from work I would read, I mean just an, an incessant reader. I was a, a sort of literature major and I just love to read. And then when I took my nursing degree and I just read all the scientific literature and obviously got more access to the internet and just reading sort of quick articles online and then obviously the event of I, things like YouTube and just different ways to get content and learning content. Uh, you know, I don't want to be like Rachel and be like Google Superwoman. And I do read a lot of peer review from, but also just not reading as much as I used to altogether. I mean, and I used to really enjoy reading good fiction. I did get back to reading a little bit when I was back in North Carolina traveling as an RN. So since that I could just come up with for Rachel Hollis off the, the top of my head that I would say I wouldn't like or one, posting a lot of content that has been plagiarized from other people. Uh, and then that would be just number one on its own. So plagiarized content. Number two would be then Secondly, being the type of leader that would then not only not take full responsibility for that act which was on my supposed, you know, Rachel Hollis Instagram page, Mrs. Rachel Hollis Instagram page, but, you know, totally throw some poor young junior, probably staff member completely under the bus and take no ownership. Number three would be referring to people who do tasks in the people's homes as people who clean the toilets rather than using respectful terms uh, domestic helper domestic work they often just call themselves cleaners you know just giving it that name and then so I would put that at number four uh, number five uh, then getting angry with your commenters uh, when they came to you about the unsuitable, unrelatable, life privileged lifestyle that you were leading and you coming back and stating that you just are uh, unrelatable and if you were relatable you would be um, doing your life wrong and yet this life that you are primarily enjoying is built off the money and finances of those who comment on your content, who subscribe to your different media and social media channels, who subscribe and listen to your podcast, who attended to your uh, now would seem like a fake marriage uh, conferences that were extremely expensive, all the you know life coaching and all the work that you know you're supposedly doing. I don't see any work in that damn list that you produced. And then number six, if I had to put about things that you shouldn't like about yourself, um, number six, and there's probably like a whole host of them um, for recent, is just like posting inappropriate pictures of your children on the internet and not taking ownership for that and yet blaming everybody else for, you know, what's wrong with them without actually looking at yourself and thinking that that could be embarrassing to that person in their adulthood or that they're all people who are not very well in the head and that's just giving them fuel to, to get on with what is not healthy. So, but, and you're not doing the work to figure out why that makes you probably not a very good mother for your young child who isn't a toddler but a child and who will be at school soon enough and whose classmates will also be able to see such content is really not paying attention 
and I used to be a school teacher and so I know how awful kids can be to one another and so I think you're not respecting your children's space I think is something you really should work on so if I those are just six things I didn't even sit down and do the work ahead of time I just sat here thought off the top of my head six things there's probably a whole host of others into the list I could throw in number seven like the fact that you think that having a, a tour at this moment in time and talking about your privileged lifestyle is really appropriate at this moment in time given all the circumstances of everything that's going on in this in this world at this moment in time you having to be like a life coach and you know going to different midwestern towns to talk your spiritual you know the type of places you're going to probably don't even have an aiming clinic in those towns i would be curious to check like which towns you're going to and if any of these towns have an aiming clinic there because if not then don't start talking about the hormone thing i'm just looking forward i'm looking forward to seeing if these tickets get sold anyway i'm starting to get heated over here not only from the sun and i promise you i have sunscreen on but heated because this list i felt was just not she did not do the work my list was better for her than her list she owned up to nothing which i didn't think she ever would i was kind of hoping she might have one except the thing with dave and i think she still threw him under the bus so anyway hope you all had a wonderful holiday weekend i started a new job recently which is why i haven't been able to get as much content out to everybody i put this as a two-part series just because uh, it was a little bit long. I'm hoping to get some more uh, Dave Hollis content out. He's been kind of quiet lately, but he's been live and active on Heidi Powell's Instagram. So anyway, again, this is Ray. The channel's Life and Vine. If you like this type of content, just like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Remember, kind comments only and we will enjoy chat. Take care. Bye.